this episode of Café de René has been brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, the number one choice for men's below-the-belt grooming. Featuring the new and improved Lawnmower 4.0 with a built-in LED light, ceramic blade for a closer cut, and also completely waterproof. To get that, but also including the rest of the package, including your ball deodorant, t-shirt, free boxes, weed whacker, please head over to manscaped.com, use the code CAFE, not only will you get all that, you will also get free shipping and also 20% off. So yep, please, head over to Manscaped, use the code CAFE, and your balls will thank you. edition of Café de René. René, you've brought a, a legend of the business to the show today. Tell everyone who you've brought. Well, in the early 2000s, my guest was every teenage boy's dream girl crush. I admit. I, yep. can it, <laughs> I was one of those teenage boys. So if I was lucky enough to work alongside her, the beautiful, talented, and very Canadian, Gail Kim. So, Gail. Hello. Oh, hello, guys. This is great. It's a reunion for us of sorts. Kind of, sort of. Last time <laughs> I seen you, was it at WrestleCon or was it at? No. I don't think so. I think it was an autograph signing. Was it? But we did that. We did that joint pay per view together <clears throat> with In TNA Japan. and Wrestle One. Yes. In Japan, yeah. Yes. Where yes. I was acting like a complete dickhead. You were kind of like, you reminded me of Sandman in a lot of ways. Your character. Because <laughs> like, I was chain smoking. <laughs> smoking, <laughs> blonde hair, yeah. hats. I mean, I hadn't seen you with the tattoos, to be honest, because it had been such a long time. So I was yeah. shocked. I was just like, oh my gosh, Renee looks completely different. <laughs> yeah. You know, I went through some rough patches there, post yeah. WWF. Yeah. But what have you been up to? I mean, I'm still in the wrestling business. You know how it is. I always say wrestling business is like the mafia. Once you get in, you can't get out, right? And um, I, I think I'm really fortunate, actually, to be in the wrestling business still after I'm retired and uh, a female. You know, um, I just, I love it. I mean, everyone knows. I'm very, it's, I'm very grateful to be able to have a job in a passion that it doesn't feel like a job. It feels like a job at times, you know, with the hard work, but I'm lucky. Yeah. yeah. So as I said before, you're Canadian. Do you still uh, label yourself Canadian now that oh, you're yes. in the United States? Yeah, I am. Dual yes, I do. I'm a dual citizen, um, but I, my heart's with Canada, right? I mean, I think every time I go back to Canada, which is um, with COVID, it's been kind of harder, but I do really notice all the things that people always told me, like Americans told me about Canadians when I lived in Canada, they're like, everyone's so nice. And, you know, all these, mostly the nice thing. And it was funny because I hadn't been there for a while and I went to Windsor to do a show and I went to the shoppers drug mart, which is like the Walgreens if for Americans out there. And um, I just, I was like, wow, everyone is so genuinely nice <laughs> genuinely. and I never noticed I had to go away in order to really see it and I said I just love Canada and I went home for three weeks last Christmas because of quarantine and everything like that and um I really did re-appreciate everything about Canada yeah so yeah, I missed it. First thing yeah. I, first thing I noticed about going to the States was nobody takes their shoe, shoes off at the door. Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> I thought that yeah. was like, well, actually, you're right. It is a Canadian thing, right? Well, yeah. Oh, we, I mean, maybe we because over we have here. so much snow. Yeah. Was that? Oh, yeah. That's, true. We, That's we true. we do over here as well. Yeah. Oh, in okay. Japan, you have to or else they'll fucking hit you with a brain. Oh, yeah. I would think. Uh, yeah. In Korea, I think Japanese and Korean culture is... Uh, very similar. similar so yeah. yeah 
So, okay, so what do you do now? Like you um, work so, for TNA or Impact? I work for Impact or Wrestling. I work for Impact yeah. Wrestling. So I started, um, once I was kind of, I knew I was going to start retiring or I had the thought in my head, I already started thinking about producing agenting. And um, so I went to Jeff Jarrett and he gave me the job. And it's funny because I told him, I said, well, you know, producing is a whole different thing from wrestling. I mean, yes, we're in the same, it's in the wrestling business, but it's a whole different role. And so, so can I shadow Dutch or someone who's been producing for years? And Jeff said, yeah, sure. Yeah, we can do that. And what did they do? They threw me on a live pay-per-view. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and boy, I mean, I don't remember how bad I did, but I'm pretty sure I did really bad. And I, but you know what? It's the fastest way to learn is when you're just thrown into it. And luckily I had the right people beside me to really guide me and help me. So they were, you know, talking to the truck when I was missing stuff. And, um, you know, still to this day, I'm still always learning when it comes to producing. And I love that um, because at the end of my career in the ring, I would say I did ask myself, that's when I knew I had to retire. It was, first off, I couldn't walk after matches. And then the second thing was, I kept on asking myself, what's my next goal? And I really couldn't answer that question. I, I felt very satisfied with what I had accomplished. So I was like, well, what's that? And then near the end, also the girls that were coming into the division were always asking me my feedback, you know, for a couple of years at that point. And I loved teaching or mentoring and doing all those things. I knew it was a natural fit for me, you know, and putting matches together, psychology, storytelling, that is my true passion within this business is doing that part. So I was like, this is a natural fit. And then eventually over time, now um, a couple of us wear many hats at Impact because we are a smaller company. Um, so I'm talent relations as well with D'Lo Brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> and it's kind of like that position that has always been labeled the bad guy. Stooge? Yeah. Stooge? <laughs> I'm not. Okay. I think, you know, Dilo and I both are kind of the same in that regard. We said we don't have to be a snake or whatever it was labeled as in the past. Um, we try to do our best, just be direct. I think being direct is the best form of communication yeah yeah so i love it so when you started because you um i didn't realize this about when i first met you but you started in toronto at sully's gym correct i didn't start at sully's technically sully's was right before ron changed from sully's was a boxing gym that was the right. name of the actual place and right. I, he moved from there and started his own wrestling school or that continued wrestling school to another location. And that's when I, I started was in that new location. Oh, so you were just with Ron Hutchinson and not Sweet Daddy Seeky. Correct. Oh, so Correct. you have any good Ron Hutchinson? Ron Hutchinson wrestled for my dad. Yeah. And he was known as the Masked Thunderbolt. Okay, and, I didn't uh, know this part yet. You didn't know this? No. Oh I my didn't God, yeah. I, I didn't grew know up that. watching the Masked Thunderbolt. Oh, so yeah so he's trained so many uh canadian legends you got edge christian uh trish. Neil, of course trish i believe did beth phoenix train with him as well a little bit yes so she started bit, off in yeah. buffalo and then pretty much continued with him continue with him so yeah. you got any good uh ronnie I'll hutchison say, stories i'll say the one thing i can two things i can say about ron he okay. teaches correctly properly yeah. i think a lot of these days, everybody wants to run before they walk. You know, yes. I think that's a very common thing with wrestlers. Yeah. He really was just like, started with the basics, really taught me the fundamentals well, which is so important. That's your ground, you know, your ground base right there. Yeah. And then, so when I went into OVW where we, we met, yeah. um, Rip kind of taught the same way. So yeah. it was very easy for me to transition uh, into the WWE style because I was trained that way. And the other thing I would say about Ron is that he was very good with women, um, supported us, uh, believed in us, did right by us. Um, and back then, if you think about it, that was in the year 2000, <laughs> you know? So it's not what women's wrestling is today. So I'm very right. grateful for that. 
And then once I learned how to walk, yeah, once I learned how to walk, uh, one of the guys, Fuego, who trained with Christian Edge, all those guys, he yeah. opened up a, a more Lucha Libre based school. And I was very interested in that uh, and Japanese style. So I went there and just kind of, you know, took off. And they were both very supportive female wrestling coaches. Yeah. So yeah, so let's talk about when we first met. You were only in OB. I think you actually beat Sly's record for the least amount of time spent in developmental. <laughs> well, Sly was two weeks. You were only there a week, right? No, no, no. I had to live in Louisville for six months. Oh my God. I had to live there for four years. Oh God. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that suburban lodge. <laughs> yes oh my yes. god the suburban lodge i think that suburban lodge is very famous for all of us <laughs> when we go down there yeah but did you have a car gail um, did you have a car yeah. i drove my car down yeah i drove i didn't have a car down. i walked oh. everywhere i had to walk to the krogers i walked to, uh, to class one day oh yeah oh my god you're hardcore <laughs> I am. um so i remember when i got signed johnny basically said to me we don't think you need developmental. You're going to go straight to TV, which I was not ready for looking in hindsight, but I was excited. So I said, oh, great. And then I got a call from him or JR. I can't remember who it was. And they said, so we're going to send you down to OVW. And at that time, I was had only lived in Toronto my whole life. So I was uh, I didn't realize I, I was just scared. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't leave Toronto. I can't leave Toronto. This is my home. You know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I can't afford to move there. I can't afford to move there. And they said, oh, we're going to give you a moving expense. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Moved myself down there. And I will say I didn't enjoy OVW because I was on the road at the same time as um, going to OVW. So I was never really put on OVW. Uh, OVW TV because I think who is it Rip and Danny it was Cornette Cornette, and, oh, Danny, Cornette yeah. Yeah. yeah and they said uh, I I don't think technically they wanted to start me in a storyline for their TV if I was just going to be pulled up to the main right. roster and so right. I'd come in off the road and train the one day with Rip and it was like and it was harder because it was literally me Jackie Gata and Nikita I think <laughs> if anyone remembers all these names. Linda Miles was there, wasn't she? Linda Miles. Um, yeah. I think she got brought up. She might have been there for practices, yeah. But yeah, I just I remember it was constantly Rip putting me and Jackie Gata in the ring together to call matches on the fly. And oh. I just remember she was she came out of tough enough, so she was very green. And I was green. I mean, I was still two, only two years in. But she, he would go, okay. And I'd be scared. If everyone doesn't know, Rip will be like, get the fuck out of the ring. Get the fuck out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I was terrified to be told to get the fuck out of the ring. Right. So You're rotten. Get out. Yes. <laughs> so, we, so we luckily never had it. And I said, so we did a couple. And I remember saying to Jackie, okay, no, you call it. She's like, no, you call it. I was like, I already called the last couple. You call it. It was like back and forth, back and forth. Um, but I will say, you know, I learned a lot from Rip because he he's a great trainer. He really is. Yeah. It's just hard. You know, everyone's a little terrified of him. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about your debut because, I mean, Jesus yeah. Christ, they, your first night in on Raw, you win the women's title. Yeah. Um, oh. So I think I've told this story before, but basically I remember going in. So green as day, you know, so green. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. walking on eggshells the whole time. And I remember they're like, okay, you're going to debut tonight. They told me at like two, three in the afternoon. And then they told me around a little bit later, oh, and you're going over for the title. And I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke. And I was like, huh, you know, whatever. They're like, no, serious. And I remember Dean telling me, Dean Malenko, I remember Fit telling me. And I was just like, oh, and I go, oh, crap, this is really happening. And so I was so green that I didn't even think about how the other girls were going to think or feel about it. So thank right. God I was that green because I think I would have been paranoid and feeling like, oh my God, I'm walking in here and taking that. I was so green that I didn't even realize that, which was great. And I remember too, since I debuted, I was always a heel on the independence, always a heel. Okay. I know a lot of people see me as a baby face, but 
I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't know what I was doing. And all I remember is when I won the title is the referee keeps on telling me from Vince, obviously, act more excited, act more ha happy, act more. And I was like, ah, I didn't know what to do. Just start and, doing cartwheels. Come oh, on. good Lord. I mean, so listen, I know that I'm very grateful now in hindsight that my career is over, that that happened because it was history. Um, yeah. but at the same time, if I could do it all over again, that was not the proper way. You know, I should have been built because if you start at the top, the only place you're going to go is down or coast. So <laughs> and being that green, of course, I was going to go downhill. And right. so, um, yeah, uh, that was my whole experience. I'm grateful for it. A lot of, I learned a lot, but um, perhaps not the best way to start. So if you don't mind talking about it, you, I mean, I've been vocal about it too. Like my time in WWF was whatever. I mean, it had its highs, but it had its lows too. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. would you mind, what was your experience there? Cause you had, you had two runs in the WWF. Yeah, I had two runs. Um, the first time I just chalk it up to being very green and right. I'm, I was, I mean, obviously when I got fired at the time, it was devastating and it literally killed my passion. I had no passion left for the business. I mean, because most people who get released get tons of offers, especially back then. Yeah. There wasn't as many talent getting hired. It was special to get hired. Um, so it was a big deal too, if you got fired, I guess. And I remember all these offers coming in on the indies right after I got released and I didn't take one. I just had zero motivation. I didn't want to wrestle anymore. I literally thought I quit wrestling. And then I think I took maybe in that one year time, I accepted two bookings and one was in Mexico for Ultimo Dragon, I believe. Dragon Mania? No, it was like, no? I don't know what it was. I wrestled, I don't know. It was, Can I don't read remember Mexico? the name of it. I don't know. I went to Mexico City with Nydia and Ultimo Dragon took care of us. And was it was it Arena Mexico? Oh, uh, I don't remember. I have I have such bad memory, Renee. It's too many terrible. concussions, Gail. Too many concussions. I'm sorry. Oh gosh, I don't remember. He just right. took care of us and took us around everywhere. <laughs> He's the best. Was. He's the best. He is the best. Yeah. Um, and I one funny story, he he was really taking care of us because he said it was a little dangerous at night. And so when we're like driving, he took us to a restaurant for dinner and we're driving to the city. And I was like, you just went through a red light. And he goes, Yeah, you can't stop. He goes, if you stop, you're gonna get carjacked. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> wow, yeah. Crazy, man. So he he was really good to us and we had the match, it was great. And then I did another show in Korea because I'm Korean, obviously. And at that time I was like, I'll do it for whatever price. Yeah. And so I did that. And still my passion really wasn't to the level I wanted it to be, or I didn't think I was gonna get back into it. Yeah. Then one day Scott Demore calls me. Oh no, no, sorry. I'm mixing up dates, but I know that I took an, uh, a booking with Nydia again in Australia. And on that tour, it was mostly TNA guys. And this was before they had their spike deal. And so we did a whole tour with them, three different cities. And I got to know Jeff and everyone else. And so Scott Damore, who I knew from the Indies all my, my whole career, he said, I know you quit wrestling, but um, Jeff really likes you. And, you know, we want to start a women's division eventually when we have more time on the show. We're about to start this new deal. <clears throat> and so would you be interested? And I said, well, I said, I'll come visit. How about that? You guys are in Orlando. Uh, I'll drive over. And as soon as I walked onto the property, saw everyone I worked the Indies with, Bobby Roode, PD Williams, just everyone, you know, Tracy, everyone I knew from the time that I was trying to achieve that goal. Yeah. It's like my, my passion just came rushing back. Yeah. like flooding back and I was like okay if you're gonna have a women's division let's do it and so I debuted on the Spike TV date and you know I never stopped since I, it was I was passionate again 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes yeah. it takes just a little a little thing like that, right? Yeah. Your, really your matches with Awesome Kong changed the face of women's wrestling, in my opinion. And for many people, um, that series was unbelievable. And your sister was involved in a couple of spots as well. But um, it's not only my sister. <laughs> just so. Did you say my sister? Was it your sister or was it not Chris? So funny. Well, on in storylines, it's my sister, yes. And right, everyone K-fabe. really K-fabe. believes. K-fabe. K-fabe. <laughs> are we are we like K-fabe right now? Yeah, well, don't forget, he's a fan. <laughs> I'm a Matt. He's I'm a Matt. Okay. She's I my little Matt sister. I did coach. just see her recently. <laughs> <laughs> but no, your matches of Boston Kong, they was unreal and the knockouts, I mean. The WWE likes to label the women's revolution, but that happened years before with TNA and knockout division. But your right. matches, Martin awesome. Kong, how great was she to work with and to get in all this applause and this praise from your series of matches? Thank you. Um, yeah, it was such, you know, when we were begging for that division and fighting for it for so long. And I was like, I just want to wrestle, just want to wrestle. Like I'm done. You know, most people would be happy collecting a paycheck and managing. And I, I took it as they're doing what I love and I have to sit back here and watch you do it while I wait for my one spot. You know, I'm like, I can't do this. So I, after, this was probably after a good year and a half of being there. I'm like, I'm going to hand in my resignation because you guys did say we we're going to start a women's division and I can't handle this anymore it's very difficult for me. And so I know people are going to be like, ah, she, you know, quitting, whatever, but Hey, it worked. Cause Jeff turned around and he said to me, they refused my resignation. <laughs> they, they said, you, you can't get out of your contract. And I was like, Ugh. and then they said, okay, well, can you work Jackie? Can you work Jackie more? I'm like, I can work anyone, bring in anybody and I will prove myself. And so we started with Jackie Moore, had an amazing feud with her. And then we gained their trust and they started bringing in, you know, they brought in another girl and then eventually they're like, okay, we're bringing in a title. We're going to bring in all these girls and we're going to have a gauntlet at bound for glory. And I just remember the day and I just screamed out loud because it's like this moment you're waiting for, for a year and a half for this to happen. And then it somehow just worked almost overnight. It, It really just all those girls it just worked. I don't know what happened. We were just so lucky and everyone worked so hard and wanted it at the time that um, we had a little bit of flavor of everyone, you know, the beautiful people, Awesome Kong, ODB. We had so many different types of people. And I think that fans had never seen that before. They were used to seeing the model like yeah. diva that WWE always presented out there. Yeah. And then with Kong, um, Loki came up to me at one point when we we're forming the division he goes you got to see this girl amazing Kong oh she's so and I never saw her work just heard the description from Loki and I was like Dutch we got to bring her in come on let's bring in this girl she sounds amazing (laughs) no pun intended and so they brought her in and um before the gauntlet happened at Bound for Glory they decided to set up the Bound for Glory with me and Kong in a singles match on impact or TNA at the time. And I remember I'd never seen her in her gear. I'd never seen her work. And when she came up to her music and I always tell this story because it's funny, you can see if you go back and watch that match, they flashed to me on the entrance and I said, oh shit. And it was real (laughs) because I was legitimately scared. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, I'm in for something here. And, um, the chemistry just was always there. I don't know why um, or how. And so she didn't mind that I brought it because I felt like I had to bring it with her. Um, and after a while of working with her, a couple of years, she's like, you make me feel like I'm in Japan. <laughs> you know, you're bringing it like the girls did in Japan. I'm like, I'll take that as a compliment. And, um, you know, we just had that special bond and chemistry and special also because it was such a David and Goliath story perfect for wrestling uh, underdog baby face and the monster heel and we both did our part I guess and created magic (laughs) but I'm just so lucky that that office at the time the Dutch Jeff Jarrett Scott Demore all of them 
were on board to give us that opportunity. Right. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's important. Yeah. Because I always so, heard from people, and I, I don't know if it's true, and I hope it's not, but Jeff, uh, someone used to always tell me, Jeff hates women's wrestling. Jeff hates women's wrestling. I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm going to prove it. Right? Yeah. And even fans, they would say that too. Yeah. To, to, to expand on that, Gail, a lot of people said the same thing about Vince Russo, but I know he done a lot of the book at the time. What was your experiences with Vince Russo? I had nothing but good experiences with him. You know, he never, he was very honest with me, which I, I appreciate. Uh, when I came back the second time, um, he said something like, you know, we know you're not a great promo person. You're not a great talker, but we're going to keep plugging away. I said, thank you, because mm -hmm. I knew that was my weakness. And he was direct with me about it. And, you know, in WWE, if you screw up a promo, they don't give you many chances. They'll just be like, okay, wow. then we're going to talk, right? So they don't, with TNA, they just kept on, they knew I needed experience and practice to keep on doing it. It's repetition. And they just kept kept it up with me and I got better. I mean, okay, I'm not the greatest talker, but I still was passable. And I feel mm. comfortable to this day to be able to talk on TV because of them. So, okay, let's talk about how your first TNA run ended and you went back to the WWF especially yeah. especially since I had a crazy they killed you're in the battle royal and you like said fuck this I'm going underneath the bottom rope and eliminating that myself the end of it. that's when I left that's when I left oh that's when you left the first time or the second no time? that's when I left the second, second. Yeah. okay okay yeah. well let's go back to when you started the first time second so run second run um yeah. so I wanted to stay with TNA Unfortunately, at that time, um, I owed more money than they offered at that time, right? So, you know, it was just a, um, I, I felt like I had proven myself at that point and okay. we just, we couldn't come to terms. Uh, yeah. So, of course, Johnny called and offered me what I wanted. And so, listen, at that point, I was like, I don't want to go there, but... I'm a stronger person. I'm wiser, more experienced now. Yeah. I've experienced it. I'm going to go in with a really positive outlook and hope that this time is different. Yeah. Obviously it wasn't, um, but I went in with the right mentality. Yeah. And um, so listen, they used me and I didn't really like, I wasn't a jobber as fans would say. I won some matches. I lost some matches. I, but I was put in a lot of things like a lot of those uh, gimmick matches, like uh, ZZ Top Legs Match, uh, Swimsuit Spectacular, you know. And on the other end of the spectrum in TNA, I'm doing ladder matches, steel cage matches, and, you know, it's so different. But I tried my best. I tried my best when I was put in these gimmick matches to make them more wrestling, what I prefer. Um, but I just, I don't know. I, I tried to ask so many times, cause you know, uh, WWE doesn't like to give answers to you. Even if you ask if I'm, I don't know if they're different now cause I haven't been there for a long time but I know when I went to Johnny when I went to writers, uh, the head writers I'd be like, what do I need to do here? I just don't understand. You say pitch ideas, pitch ideas but then you know um, other talent are pitching too many ideas. I'm like, you say it's too much pitches or not enough. I said, what is it? They're like, well, we'd say it maybe every four to six weeks. And I'm like, I, I never had to pitch idea. I mean, I get, of course, that shows that you're excited and creative and all these things, but they have a creative team for that. Right. You know? right. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Okay. So I get pitching it though. I, I understand that aspect, but it was like this timeline and, um, and then I'd say, what am I doing wrong? Nothing, Gail, you're not doing anything wrong. Okay, so then why am I not being used? You know, it was just like running around in circles because they couldn't answer you. I don't know if that's like a direct instruction from the boss. A hundred percent. You know, it's a one man show. Okay, right? so I mean, even if I, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. If I was doing anything wrong, um, I didn't know what direction to take at that point. So 
Right. You know, that can, some people last in that company for years and I don't know how, because uh, it's, I always tell people it's more of a mental game there than a physical game. It's, yeah. you better be prepared mentally, emotionally before you walk into that company in wrestling in general too. Um, but that's not the hard part. The physical part is the mental part. And so, <clears throat> listen, I'm not a politicker. I'm not one to go kiss some hiney and I just want to be me. I just want to be able to do what I love. Uh, give me the opportunity. Um, but it just, I didn't fit. My personality didn't fit there, you know? So, and it's obvious because whenever the end of the contract would come, which is only a three-year contract, I'm like, I can't stay here anymore. I'm going to go insane. I am wasting my time and people wait for years, six to eight years. I don't know longer. And yeah. I, I will not put myself through that mentally and emotionally. Uh, right. When I knew I had more to give, you know, I really knew, I really believed in myself. So, you know, that's part of it too. Uh, some people don't have that personality. I have a very feisty fightery, <laughs> fightery uh, type of right. Honestly, because I once I left WWF in 2000s, I left the United States completely, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in Japan the whole time. I'm still in yeah. Japan, actually. I'm going back in April. Oh, you but, are? Yeah. So uh, you were the only person that actually that I could hear of about when I was overseas. Like oh, you hear it okay. like I heard Hogan coming in and all this shit, but the only yeah. one that I that had buzz that I would hear about was you. Oh, interesting. So really, in my opinion, uh, that because like, there's a lot of people that jump, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you were the yeah. only one that really did you something inside of it. Did, did something. something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you like like um, James says, like you took women's wrestling to another level. You know? It was about opportunity, though, you know, it really, and it was about the fight. Listen, it was about the fight because when I walked into TNA, it wasn't, um, it was taking a long time. <laughs> it was like a year and a half of managing. Um, so when is this girls thing going to happen? Um, listen, because I started wrestling late. I started, my first bump came at 23 years old. Okay. Um, so everyone's kind of starts in their teenage years, at least in today's uh, landscape, I find. And so by the time I came out of WWE, especially that second time, I'm like, I'm in my thirties. My clock is ticking in this wrestling business. I have stuff to accomplish. I need to get the hell out of here. Yeah. I don't care. And so I set up um, the contract with Impact. So the night that I rolled out of the battle royal, um, I knew my back pocket, I had Impact in my back pocket, right? So uh, it was um, a safety net in a sense, because you can't just, it's hard to just walk away from. That's what I did. I didn't yeah. have anything. I well, just there you go. Out. Well, you have yeah. bumps. <laughs> yeah, I know. You really do. so pumped. <laughs> Good that you, you, you put yourself first. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it's not like you didn't give it a chance, Renee. You really did. No, you did. I was, yeah. shit from 18 to 20, almost 24. So that's six years. But yeah. it was like, well, the Benoit shit happened, dude. Yeah, it was too much for me mentally. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean? All those guys, especially all the Canadians that died, like. It was a rough time. And you and I think, you know, sometimes, um, cause we're not a seasonal sport. We need time off. It's a lot yeah. to uh, being on the road. There's also that like, when they're not being used, and then mm -hmm. you're sitting at home and then you get that call like a date where you're supposed to fly out and like, oh, well, you're not, you're not needed. And it makes yeah, you feel this yeah. fucking big. Yeah. And then you're so paranoid that they're going to fire you because, mm -hmm. you know, they'll release people like eight, nine, ten at a time. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. And then you're, yes. and you know, those contracts are bullshit yeah. because you can sign a five year or three year deal, but they can release you anytime they want for any reason they want. Right. It's so one sided. It, it, it's a very fear-based um, environment, which, yes. you know, some people respond to that. Not a lot. I would think I don't respond to that. I don't respond well in a fear-based environment. So 
um, like I said, everyone's a different human, everyone's a different personality of how much they can take or how much they believe in themselves. And I just knew that I couldn't stay for another three years and break my, my being down, my, uh, my confidence, wait, wait. my confidence was already going down and you don't realize, um, your value, you know, you got to realize your value. And, um, I just believed in myself, like I said, and took that chance. Well, so thank God. And I didn't know how TNA was going to treat me when I came back. I actually expected to be punished. <laughs> I don't really? think a lot. I've never said that out loud. Um, I thought when I resigned, even though they brought me back, I was like, oh, I left them the first time. And I left on great terms. I really did. But I yeah. still felt like maybe they'll punish me for leaving them. And I, I mean, they really didn't. They really propped me up. So okay um, but, so, but yeah. how many people pop to the way you eliminate yourself in that batter oil because i popped what i seen <laughs> i think it's um a very memorable thing from what i yeah. gather from fans re responses i uh, i was just really fed up at that point the way we were treated as women there and yeah. i don't know if you experienced those days of when the women were always the first one cut raw always and we already didn't have we're already treated a certain way and how we were viewed. So for me, um, already being treated a certain way as not a wrestler. Um, and then to have us cut continuously, continuously. So we go all out, we would go out there and the fans sometimes will, they can't absorb what's happening in two minutes and we can't tell a story in two minutes or three minutes. So we're, it was just, it was at the point where the girls were like, just cut us, just cut us. We'd rather just get cut than go out there for two minutes and make fools out of ourselves, you know? And so, um, so again, that night, the battle Royal happened and we had an order of what we were supposed to be get eliminated. Um, and I thought about it and Maurice was actually supposed to eliminate me but she got injured halfway through, or she had an injury in which they just pulled her from the match. And so they trusted, uh, you know, me, Natty, Beth, the more experienced girls to kind of, he didn't have to, you know, be so hands-on. It was, I think Goldust was our agent. And so he's like, hey, you got your elimination covered? I'm like, yeah, I got it covered. And he's like, how are you going to eliminate yourself? And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to eliminate myself. Like <laughs> what I said, but he didn't think it was anything suspicious like that. And I think he thought more like, okay, Fox would be in front of the rope. And then I come running for a drop kick through the rope and she moves and I get eliminated. Right. 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 But instead I just hit Fox and I said, sell. And then I rolled out of the ring because they cut our time once again. And they're like, okay, yeah. first four or five people need to get eliminated in the first two minutes. And I'm like, I'm done with this. I'm so yeah. done with this. Um, yeah. And that's just more of my, I guess, rebellious side <laughs> at the time. Right. You would think mm -hmm. uh, you, you would think Stephanie McMahon would be a big advocate for women's wrestling, but it doesn't appear to be that way. Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. Um, oh, I've never seen any indication of her. Um, I, I, at that time, listen, Stephanie was nice. Stephanie was professional with us backstage, but I, in no way did I ever feel like she was fighting for us. I don't, I didn't feel like anybody was fighting for us to be honest. I'm not just going to put it on Stephanie. Although, you know, if she, she, right now, she's always been women empowerment in these, since the women's revolution. So I wish she would have been more like that before. I'm not going to lie. I did wish that. Um, if anything, we had fit in our corner being our agent yeah. most of the time, but I think fit was also like one of us in the sense of fear-based positioning with all the producers. They're all scared for their jobs and losing. So they're they're more like robots in the sense of taking the business from their meeting and what Vince wants to us. So it's they can't necessarily fight for us because they're worried about their own position, right? Yeah. So Fit could only fight oh so much for us, which we understood. Um, I just thought it was a losing battle because Vince just never liked women's wrestling. You know, that's what you chalk it up to. Mm. You know, making assumptions when you don't have answers. So, like he, he wasn't too crazy about tag team wrestling either. No, and he still isn't, right? So, right. Um, it's uh, 
Vince has a certain outlook on the business and he likes what he likes, you know, and he's kind of going back to that formula now, I think, from what I understand. I haven't watched their television show in 16 years. No, I, I, I'm basing this based on everything that's happening with NXT. So that's their developmental, right? So uh, you know, Hunter uh, had a very different mindset in terms of opening up the doors to that company with independent talent. And right. you know, even the TNA talent at the time was very like, oh, TNA, you know, we're a label TNA. And then eventually once the AJs and, you know, the Bobby Roots and everyone came and now it's an accepting, okay, they're more accepting of, it's not a, an X on your resume to be part of TNA. You can actually get hired now, right? If anything, we develop talent for them. <laughs> Right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, do, we do great job with developing talent, I think. James, you got anything? Oh, I've got questions for about two or three hours. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah you can ask whatever you want. <laughs> well, you mentioned development talent, and a lot of the impact stars have made away, such as uh, Rascals or MSK, as we know them now. But the one that surprised me, and I saw him as a future WrestleMania main event, was Killer Cross. And they doing well in NXT. They brought him up, separated him from Scarlett, and he was there within a few weeks, and then he was let go. Um, how shocked was you when this happened? I mean, I was surprised more that uh, he got brought up by himself. So yeah. I really think them as a package deal is what's the star power. Not to say that they can't hold each other on their own, on their selves, you know, hold their own. But um, I think as a team, it's much yeah. more powerful. Um, she's a very beautiful, powerful presence, uh, Scarlet, And Killer Cross just adds to that. And he was learning and he was doing great and developing wonderfully in uh, Impact as well. Um, so that was surprising. And you always hear rumors about why. And, um, you know, obviously that's kind of, played out publicly in terms of NXT and Hunter and Vince and all that stuff. I don't know the details of that, so I don't want to speculate. Um, but you can kind of see what's happening. And now that's, at least they're together now doing yeah. like, you know, Renee took himself out of the situation. I took myself out of the situation. Sometimes they can bring you back um, if that's what they would like. If you make a splash for yourself elsewhere, right? So perhaps they can go and do their thing on the indies wherever they need to work and um, reestablish themselves and get back in there with some company, right? So, Would you be interested in bringing them back? Uh, I don't know. They kind of like, I don't, I was not involved so much in when they left with us, but I know that that was um, a not so pleasant situation, I guess, in it didn't work out amicably, so I don't, and they have voiced their opinion in terms of not wanting to come back as well. So that's not really, I'm talent relations, but I am yep. i don't make those decisions myself. Um, I, I would probably, probably say not in the near future, at least for no. now, yeah. Based on what I know. Great. Shooter McGavin, Gail Kim. <laughs> um you know but there's a lot of great talent out there right now there's just um isn't it crazy just going from a year back from now that because AEW and WWE was scooping up everyone it was like a lot of independent talent were getting hired everyone was getting hired and we were getting slim pickings you know we couldn't yeah we couldn't get too many talent that were available because everyone was getting hired. But now it's Fuck. crazy. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a highly competitive uh, business industry right now, which is great. I think it's actually good for the business because I think this generation, I would like to see more people step it up and work harder and you kind of need that. You need that competitive environment to see who's going to rise to the top. The cream is going to rise to the top. How much work do you want to put in? How much sacrifice do you want to put in? I give that talk to many talent now. I'm like, okay, so what are you doing right now? How much harder are you working? 
than the other people. And I always use, you know, who's a great example for me, Moose. Moose is our champion right now. And he's been with us for a little while. And when he first came in, I'm not going to lie. And I would tell him straight to his face. I'll say, Moose, he was the guy from ROH, big guy, sure. You know, Moose, Moose catchy, all that. Um, I think so differently and highly of him right now. I think he's a star now because he's put in the work and I see it. I see it. I am a gym freak. I'm a fitness freak. Uh, I will be in the gym every day, even when I'm not wrestling. And even when I was not able to walk after people would see me in the gym, um, Moose beats me to the gym every morning at work, you know, and I see that on a consistent basis. And I see the sacrifice he puts in and the work he's putting in and it's paying off. And I'm seeing it in his in-ring work as well. And just in every way. Um, so that cream has risen to the top, you know, and it can go even further. And I respect that. And um, I wish I could see more of that in this generation. Sure. One of the uh, two biggest stars during your era and after all eras was Lita and Trish. Um, what do you think of Lita coming back and she's wrestling in Saudi this weekend? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good friends with Amy, and, oh, sorry, Lita. <laughs> and, um, I'm, I was so ecstatic for her. I really thought she looked great and did so great at the Rumble. Uh, Cause you know, she's done many appearances before but for some reason, this particular one, I felt like she really shined. And I, she always gets a great reaction from the crowd no matter how long she's been gone. You know, the fans adore her, they respect her. And um, I'm so happy that she has this storyline with Becky. I know that, you know, they have a relationship outside of uh, the company. And normally I would say majority of the time you have your best feuds and matches with those you trust and have a great relationship with. So I'm looking forward to it. I actually might tune in, <laughs> which would be a rarity, but I would to support her. And I support all women across. I mean, I support all wrestlers, of course, but my passion uh, obviously is very transparently with women's wrestling. Um, but I'm really excited for that. Did you ever get invited to, obviously you, with uh, Impact um, for the long haul, you could definitely get a beat with them, but was there ever an invite for the uh, Evolution pay-per-view they put on? Oh, no. I don't think that no. they would ever invite me to anything. And um, that's something that when you <laughs> turn it. Me too. <laughs> High five. <laughs> yeah, um, listen, I knew when I rolled out of that battle royal. And listen, it's a very Vince and everybody, you've seen them be forgiving with a lot of people. Um, I cut that off mentally in my mind. So, you know, Renee um, asked me the same question on her podcast like, were you disappointed? And I was like, no, because I never had that expectation. I never put it in my mind. I cut that off mentally, emotionally in every way. And um, yeah, I mean, I ended my career the way that I wanted to end it. Not many wrestlers can say that. So uh, to have that closure is very rare. And I'm, I almost, I don't want to touch that in a sense. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to touch that last match because I was satisfied with it and I'm not satisfied with a lot <laughs> so you know I'm 45 yeah but you look 22 <laughs> yeah but I mean when do you close that door then right when do you close right. that door? yeah just yeah. cut it off. you gotta cut it up and just stick with it <laughs> It's very difficult. I, I do miss their moments. I've been offered to work with Deanna again. You know, I, yeah. people, people ask, but I, I stand my ground on that one. Really? Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to happen, you and Deanna. I really did. <laughs> what if they offered you $10 million? $10 million? <laughs> yes, I could do it. <laughs> okay. But I didn't okay. offer that money. I was like, right. hey, give me some John Cena rock money and maybe it might happen. Right. <laughs> Listen, yeah. it's got to cover my cortisone shots in my back, a possible back surgery after that, and then a fee where I actually make the money to put in make my bank. Some money. 
Yeah. So do you gotta get cortisone in your back? For the test of match, my last match, I had to get, I had to tell them I will come out of retirement, um, but I had a couple of requirements, and I said, I need two months notice because I want to prepare and train my ass off, um, and what was the other? Um, oh, what I, oh, and it's only one match. I said I can't do multiple matches to lead up to the final match. I said I'll do physicality, but I won't have more than one match, which is. You know, I'm taking a chance there. I haven't wrestled for 15 months to have the match that I'm satisfied with. And I had to put in a lot of work. And I, yes, I had um, two cortisone shots for that in my back and my spine to make sure that I felt normal. Yeah, so. Gail, I've been off for th uh, almost two and a half years because yeah. of this freaking corona. And I got to go to fucking Japan working for Noah. With guys like Shiozaki, Marafuji for three months. Oh my God. Wait. Imagine how I feel. Have you started training yet, though? Have you started training? I never quit. Look at me, baby. Look at the guns. <laughs> but in the ring, I mean, oh. I don't have a ring to train in. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm going to do my Rocky training, baby. It's, I'm still in Canada, so I got the snow. Yeah. But you know I'll be what? running in the woods. I've been like doing it since birth, Renee, pretty much. So. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yes. On my yes. fifth birthday, my dad got me booked out for Stu in Calgary, you know. I remember <laughs> having one conversation with you in OVW, and I don't know if you remember, because I remember thinking to myself. That I hit on you. No. Yes, I did. <laughs> I well, I'm two to. stories from OVW. I was 18, <laughs> damn it. No, I don't remember you hitting on me. I do remember two things. Me having a conversation with you saying, wow, like, I got really deep, I think, and I said, do you feel like you've missed out on your childhood because you've been in wrestling? <laughs> and you were, you said, yeah. And so, you know, that's a big deal. So I was just curious about, yeah, the emotional, mental stress that that would have, that you felt like you didn't have a normal childhood and then get thrown into this circus life, you know? And um, I was concerned, I guess, you know, as a fellow Canadian and friend. And well, then, hey, I, uh, <laughs> I turned out great, Gail. <laughs> and then the second thing. Turned out great, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> you turned out great. You got your life yeah. together. You're still wrestling. Um, and the second thing I remember is Rip putting me in the ring with you. And you kept on going to the headlock spot. And I was like, oh, this guy. Oh, yeah, headlock, headlock takeover. No, put me back in the headlock. Headlock this, headlock. Oh, I'm going to lift you up for the headlock takeover. I'm like, okay, I know what he's doing now. I'm 18. I'm French. And I have an Asian fetish. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Sorry, Gail. Did you have that at the time? No. I've had it since. I you know You know uh, Milia Hosaka? Yes, yes. My dad booked her when I was a kid. Okay, and you fell in love. And with I that. was hooked ever since. Oh, that's hilarious. She dressed up like a geisha. She had the geisha makeup. <laughs> yeah. Hooked ever since. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Did not know yeah. that. I thought it just you have, you married a nation because you lived in Japan for so long. <clears throat> well. Yeah, I mean, I read something on Facebook, so it has to be true that yeah. most men who go, to, <laughs> so most men who go to Asia, Asia yeah. and live there for over two years will end up yeah. marrying an Asian woman. I so, believe it. And Asian uh, women take care of their men. And I need to be, you know, I need to be Taking taken care, care of. of. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. At least you admit it. I admit it. <laughs> no, it's been 13 years. She hasn't killed I have me a yet. Question. So. Do you ever talk to Sly? We've reconnected. Mm. Uh, I talk to him about once a month. Good. Uh, mm. And we're working on getting a permit for the United States and touring around doing a resistance tour. I'm yeah. so happy to hear that. I'm so yeah. happy to hear that. I was fully entertained by La Resistance. Um, I was actually really surprised when you guys I was actually surprised when you got let go. Sly, on the other hand, not he's great, funny yeah. in real life. Yeah. And I rode with him on the road and all that stuff. But you were definitely more the more experienced wrestler. Yeah, so yeah. Kind of just surprised in that regard. It's weird because I had asked for my release. Mm -hmm. And then like within a week, they fired him. Oh. Uh, 
Yeah. Sly's hilarious, though. If anybody knows Sly in real life, oh my God, that guy cracks me up. You yeah. just, you just gotta know him. You gotta yeah, understand gotta his know. personality. Because yes. if you don't know him, you think, yeah. "Who the fuck is this asshole?" Well, but he had know. so much heat. That's all I remember. So much heat when he started that he yeah. rode with the girls. That's why I rode with him because he he didn't have a choice. He would ask the girls to ride with him because none of the guys would ride with him. Right. <laughs> It right. was like heat by association. I think right. I remember telling him one time when he had so much heat, I'm like, Sly, I don't think I can <laughs> with you. I'm so sorry. I'm like, heat by association is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But oh, yeah. I love the guy. He's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, we get along great now. He's got yeah, two good. beautiful daughters. He's got a, oh, uh, yeah, he lives in uh, Tampa. Are you living in Tampa? He lives in Tampa? Naples, Naples. He lives in Naples. Oh, I didn't even Naples. know he's in Florida. Oh, yeah. Florida area. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I forget we're this is worldwide. I want she doesn't live in she lives in Florida. <laughs> half sorry. in Canada, half in Florida. Yeah. Uh, oh, do you get a house in Florida too? Uh, Canada too? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Just leading the fans the other way. Oh, careful. okay. <laughs> but I can't James, lie. I can't lie. <laughs> you can't, James. Make sure to edit this out. I don't want to talk <laughs> on Gail. Those talk is outside. No, no, no. There's some crazy fucking fans out there, dude. Oh uh, yeah, I know. I've Especially heard for the women, I some, feel for from this podcast as well. I've heard stories. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Thank yeah. You. Thank you. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I don't think there's anything else, James. Can I just plug a little bit? When is this airing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Yeah, please. So everyone knows you can check out everyone. And I'm actually back on screen as an impact management um, on-screen character, uh, authority figure with Scott Demore. Uh, you can watch Impact Thursday nights on Access TV or we have YouTube as, as well. So people can subscribe to that. It's only like 99 cents a month. It's very cheap. You get access to yeah. everything. Uh, impact Plus. And we have a couple of shows coming up. Uh, New Orleans this week. We got Philly coming up. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Back to our old stomping grounds uh, up until March. So you can get tickets on impactwrestling.com and check us out. Yeah. Where are you guys running in Louisville? Not the Davis Arena. No. um, I have to check. It's another arena. I don't even know where it is. It's like 10 minutes from the airport, it said. But um, I just checked the distance from the airport. I don't know why. (laughs) But it's... Let me check. Uh, Impact Wrestling Mobile. I've never heard of it though, but I haven't been there for a long time. Right. Well, Kentucky is at Old Forester's Paris Town Hall. Oh, you don't know it. Okay. I haven't been there in 16 years. I, I gotta go back someday. Yeah. They've really built up that downtown from what I hear. Yeah, there's a yeah. sixth street. Yeah, something like that. Sixth fifth. Street, it's right? fifth. It's Fifth Street. Fifth Street. Fifth, Fifth Street. Street. Mm-hmm. Fifth uh, Street. You know what I used to do? Because I was there when it first got built, right? So yeah. I was young and a little crazy. Have a nice so, day cafe. I remember that. Do you remember right. that? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So anyway, I would go and buy a whole bottle of Bacardi. Not shots. I would go to the bar and buy the whole bottle, usually between four and five hundred dollars, right? Yeah. And then I would walk around and pour everybody drinks. Yeah, boys or even strangers, usually girls, because then yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is my trick. If girls will go like this, <laughs> yeah, right, then you yeah. know they're wild. Then yes. you know you got them at the end yes. of the night. Oh yeah. So then <laughs> I would do that till half the till half the bottle was done. Yeah. And then I'd fucking I'd sink the thing. Oh my god. Yeah. So that the was the old days of being young and having young blood. Exactly. No, I, I couldn't do that. I'd die of a fucking heart attack or something. Yeah. 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 Well, Gail, you're as beautiful as ever. And mm-hmm. I wish you nothing but the best. And uh it was great to catch up. It was. And yeah. um I'll try to catch uh impact wrestling. But <laughs> well, I don't watch any wrestling. I know I don't even watch myself wrestling. I- I get it. Totally get it. Right? You get it, right? I'm in the okay. same boat. I'm in the same boat. I watch Impact, and I I keep up with wrestling on Twitter, to be honest, because you follow enough wrestlers and companies, you kind of know what's going on, right? So, okay. I'm not allowed to have a Twitter. I'm not okay. sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very toxic place, so it's okay. 
Yeah, yeah and I'm a very <laughs> sensitive boy. Yeah, you're the top. Thank you. Okay, Thank bye you. bye. Oh, nice to talk to you too, Jane. Okay, bye guys. Bye.